Hey there, everybody, and welcome back. For those of you that are interested in learning more about different codeless application development platforms, stay tuned not only to this video, but also to the channel and the playlist. Uh, in this playlist, I'm actually walking through in-depth reviews of several different codeless application development platforms. I'm trying to focus on the more affordable options, so I'm actually doing an overview of pricing, at least at the time of filming each video, as well as an overview of the features and functionality. And then I walk through the interface as I kind of do the first steps of creating an app just to show you what it looks like. Today we're going to be covering AppGeyser, which is a very unique one, potentially one of the most unique out there because of their pricing model, or I guess I should say lack of pricing model. Now before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned to the channel for new content. Now let's go ahead and scroll down. So really what I want to show you, because when we hear free, um, if you've stayed tuned up into this point in this basically in this series, you've noticed that there's only been one truly free platform and that was AppGyver, which I actually have a separate series on. If you're interested in, I'll put a video link in the description. But you'll see here, how is it free? So they have a monetization policy, so to speak, where basically they have a 50-50 revenue share on advertisements. So the idea is they're gonna put ads in your application they keep half the money, you keep the other half. However, because of that, it looks like I'm guessing, uh, you may want to look into this further, but likely you're not going to have as much control over the advertising piece. Then you'll notice they have a premium feature, which is a small fee to maximize revenue or just disable advertisements. So you have that option as well. Now, let's go ahead and jump in. So when you click create an app, you're immediately going to be taken to a page where it's going to say, do you want to do business or individual? Since I was previously on this web page, the only difference when you click it for the first time is it'll give you two separate screens, basically asking which category are you in? Are you like an entrepreneur or are you in this category? So you have the option to choose between both. So you'll notice when you click on business, for example, you'll see some different pages that are going to be set up. These are essentially your templates. When you click on individual, you'll see you have options here. So you can choose a template and you can change this at any point if you need to. Um, so we're just going to click on guide. Now we'll click next. And here's what we're going to do. Now I would recommend trying to make sure that you choose the correct template the first time around. I believe you should be able to change it at any point, but just to be safe, uh, in the event that there are any issues with it, since we haven't even created an account just yet, I would make sure that you try to choose the best template first. So what you're going to do here is you'll see you have navigation types, and this will, if you click right here, it's going to give you a quick overview of what this type is going to look like. And then we'll click on this one. So you'll see what these look like. I personally like this one more. So we'll click category, and we'll just put category as dog. I have a couple of images from a previous video. So we'll just go ahead and click crop here. And then we'll put an article name. We'll just put dog one, short description. This is the description. And then you can attach an image. Let's just put a smaller version of the same exact image. So it'll be a little pixelated. And then article body, because these are basically designed to be across the, in a template similar to like a guide. So we'll just put, hey, this is the article. And then if you click on add more, you'll see that you have the option to add more articles as well. And then if you click on new, you have the option to create new categories. So we could put dog2, attach image. This is an image from something completely different. So we'll click crop on that. And what we'll do here, so I'm gonna remove that and we're just gonna have these two. So this one will be dog2 and short description. And the main reason I'm going through this is just so you can kind of see the layout. But here it is. So now we'll click next and you'll see it requires you to have an image. So we'll just pick the same image just like we did before. It'll force you to crop it to meet their resolution. You'll click next. 
and you can click here to see a preview. So we'll see if it works for this application. So it doesn't look like it's working for me and you'll see it says preview does not work for some applications. So um, I guess we'll just have to skip that for now. All right, so uh, what we'll do, we may actually have to refresh the page a little bit. Let me see. So this application builder, uh, just to be transparent with you, it's very, very basic. As you can tell, it looks like we're already having some hiccups actually like generating a preview. And now we don't have the ability to click next. So we may have to try to add something and remove it just to allow us to go to whatever the next page is. So let's try refreshing here. And it looks like it pushed us back. So as you can tell already, this is not a great start for the app builder. So let's just do this with one dog picture. We'll pick this one here. Name one, short description. And the main reason that I would recommend using this builder, just because I've, I've tested it in the past, it's quick, easy, and it's basically there if you just want to create like an MVP. Um, so for example, we're just going to put name one, description one, body one, and we'll click next. And you'll see it'll say field is required, so we'll choose this. And then we'll add that image that it's going to force us to add. Now, as we're kind of loading all of this, again, the app builder is not the most functional out there in my opinion. Um, it doesn't give you total control. You're following some pretty strict templates and guidelines. However, if you can make your idea fit into something like this, you want to generate some revenue and test it, this is a great platform to avoid getting sucked into a pricing model where you're expected to spend $50 a month, and then you may not even get a return on that for a while. So um, just a general thought for you. But let's go ahead. We'll keep the default icon, but you can choose a custom icon if you want. And then you can fine tune your app by clicking create. So here's where you would need to log in. So what we can do is we will type in, uh, we use the suggested password and then we'll make a couple changes actually. And then we will click create. Now you'll see this is where we're going to go ahead and click skip tour. So let's see what options they have. So you have a sale that I've honestly, I think they run sales pretty regularly. So you have a couple of options. So there's a $10 a month, five and one. So let's look at the pricing options. Um, so as we're scrolling down, you can see the no ads option is the $10 per month which also includes app editing, which they all do, app monetization, which they all do. And then if you want to remove the app guys or branding, you would have to pick one of these higher options. Custom branding is only available with the top one. You do have push notifications and they're unlimited for these top two tiers. Custom push notifications in the top tier. And then again, you see all of these other options, premium support, app backups, anti-spam protection, etc. So you can subscribe to all of those if you're interested. And then you can actually get um, access to your app's Java key store and enroll in Google Play app signing, which is really, really cool. So the fact that they give you all of these options uh, is, is pretty cool overall. But let's see if we can do something like, maybe we want to check on Go Live. So you can see here, you can type in your developer name, contact info, and then you can create, a, looks like a Google Play account from here, if you're interested. Uh, so this is actually just screenshots, so you would basically have to go, you know, create your Google Play account as we've discussed in previous videos. Now, here you have the promotion option. So we won't cover that in too much detail. You can look at that in your own time if you're interested. Now, the big thing is, distribution. So um, you can get kind of go through all this in your own time, but you have the option to scan this QR code and actually build and download your mobile application. 
So what this means is basically you can actually get the APK file that you would publish and you can also get it by clicking up here. So uh, the option down here for build and download, um, basically it's a web widget that's a workable QR code. So this is available when the app is not built, but you can also just click download APK, which will allow you to download your APK file and publish it to Google Play. You have your monetize option right here as well. This is gonna be important for a lot of you, especially as this platform is designed to be free if you plan to uh, like accept their monetization policies. But you'll see you can disable ads right here. If we were to click save, we'll see what happens. And it's going to make you upgrade. So you'll see that's kind of how they've worked on this. And then you have your ad mob statistics. So this is using ad mob as your advertising platform, so to speak. You can check stats, backups, etc. So let's go back to the dashboard just to test how easy exactly is it to go ahead and continue actually editing. So you'll see right here, you can download your app if you want to get the APK file now. But let's say maybe we want to actually edit this application a little bit more. It's entirely up to you, but we would just click on edit right here. Click no thanks. And it looks like it may actually not let us. So upgrade to get access to app editing, statistics, backup, push notifications. So if you want, you can click on upgrade here. And you can choose your plan. Um, honestly, I think it's worth at the very least uh, going, if you go to bill annually and you go to starter, $12 a year to get the basics is really not that bad. But the fact that they're making us upgrade to get access to app editing to me basically means that we have one shot when you're trying to create this application start to finish. So basically what we've created, it looks like it's been saved. You can download the APK if you want and publish that following whatever their advertising policy looks like. The unfortunate side to that is if they're spamming users with ads, it could give your branding a bad name. So it's entirely up to you. Um, again, if you're interested, you can just go back to appgeyser.com. So we'll type in appgeyser. And let's just click log out. And again, I'll just look at the editor one more time. So I feel like overall in this video, we haven't had the best impression of this platform. For the price, I think that we're honestly basically getting what we're paying for. So if you're interested, again, you can go to the website. It looks like it'll give you a uh, go with just creating whatever these templates are. So you could choose whatever looks best for you. And then after you've chosen a template, you'll click next. And this is where you're going to make changes to what you see over here on the right. Although the preview does not always work that well. And then that's going to be your application. So it looks like you're going to have to upgrade if you want to make any edits. But if you just want to get the APK, APK file first run through, you would just make your edits here. Make your basic MVP. Again, minimum viable product. And then publish it at the Google Play Store. So um, I apologize. I know this video probably doesn't look like it's the best running through. Uh, this is the only platform that has a free option. It's also the only platform that locks you out after you've created the app initially. And again, $12 a year is not terrible pricing if you just want to test it, but it's not going to have anywhere near the features and functionality of the other platforms that we've looked at previously. So if you just want to get something basic out there, feel free to go ahead and sign up for that $12 a year membership. You can cancel it if you need to. Make sure you check in their cancellation policy, but overall, what's the value of this platform? The price. Everything else, the shortcomings, the lack of features and functionality, I don't think the interface is super clean. Um, I do think that there are definitely going to be some drawbacks. So this is not my favorite platform, but it's a great platform just to test and mess around with to see what features it lacks. And that may help you figure out what actually you may need from your next application platform. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below and I'll see you all in the next video.